Hello, everyone. My name is Zhuo Zhenghu, and from Alibaba Cloud, I'm glad to introduce the Dragonfly V2 to everyone today. We believe that V2 architecture will bring a breakthrough in the domain of the cloud native file and the image distribution. First, let's, took, let's take a look at the current situation of a Dragonfly V1. At present, the number of start of a Dragonfly V1 has reached more than 5,500, and the number of adopters has also exceeded 110, involving various industries such as telecommunication, finance, cloud computing, local life service, and so on. There are ten maintainers in the project, which are from Alibaba Cloud, ND Group, ByteDance, eBay, and Meitu. At present, there are 77 contributors. Here we warmly welcome more people to join the Dragonfly project. Our discuss discussion group includes DingTalk and Gitter. So, what prompted us to initiate the Dragonfly V2 project? There are many the following reasons. First, Dragonfly V1 had some defects in the architectural design. It fails to meet the glowing needs of the file and the image distribution business, which gradually exposed its deficiency in stability, efficiency, and security. Second, currently it can only support HTTP protocol and lacks adaption of uh, for other types of storage, such as HDFS storage service from various cloud vendors, Maven, Yum, and so on. Thus, it greatly restricts coverage, seniors, and further hinders proportion and values dimension dimension in companions and uh, communities. Third, currently it only supports the active poor model and lacks the active push as well as synchronization skills, which are the basic conditions to satisfy for our product positioning. Fourth, Dragonfly V1 lacks the productive, no task management and control, data dashboard, multi-tenancy, permission, control, and so on. Fifth, inconsistent internal and external versions, high maintenance costs, and the difficulties to uh, synchronize, synchronize new features and the problem fix with a short time. Compared with Dragonfly V1, V2 system has brought some in innovation in many aspects. In terms of architecture, Firstly, the subsystems are decoupled from each other and support on-demand deployment, which makes the uh, architecture more flexible. Second, it, support, it supports the third-party tools to integrate Dragonfly ability natively, such as various cloud storage download tools. Third, com compared with the V1 architecture, V2 supports better horizontal Scalability. With the expansion of CDN node, the pressure on remote source remains basically unchanged. Fourth, it provides high, higher availability guarantee by encapsulating RPC framework. In the aspect of scheduling strategy, first, task dispatch is based on peer granularity to improve the throughput of a single scheduling node. Second, through real-time analysis of the result of the client, so as to uh, dynamically adjust the P2P network strat stra uh, structure to achieve scheduling optimization. Thirdly, other, schedule other scheduling strategies are supported by uh, plugins, uh, plugin way such as intelligent scheduling based on machine learning algorithm, 
on the client on the client side through their copy streaming downloading and the current offloading technology the IO efficiency of the client is greatly improved in terms of productization first support more distribution models such as pushing signalization remote copy and so on second it supports account authority talent third it supports dynamic configuration management to facilitate layer time control of subsystems fourth it supports the dashboard and the tracing and so on just to explain why we decided to initiate Dragonfly V2 project and its innovation. So, how do we design it? This is the module structure of Dragonfly V2, which mainly includes manage, scheduler, CDN system, client, SDK, and the only RPC framework. The manager is the central a uh, controller of a whole system, which provides a dashboard, user task management and configuration management, and expose less for API. Scheduler is mainly responsible for scheduling peer and acting as a metadata channel. CDN is mainly responsible for making seeder and catching files. Client is mainly responsible for uploading and downloading files and is integrated by other third-party tools through SDK. Finally, each subsystem communicates through RPC framework. Next, uh, I will introduce the V2 architecture from, uh, uh, from the um, perspective of interaction between subsystems. Let's first take a look at the solu solution of Dragonfly V1. As shown in the figure, the whole architecture is divided into layers, including a super node providing scheduling and CDN capabilities and the DFGET client deployed on each machine. In the Dragonfly V2 architecture on the right, it is obvious that there is a big difference between V1 and V2. First, Scheduler and the CDN are decoupled and interact with each other through the RPC interface. And the CDN is optionally deployed. The client is in client and server mode, which is divided into DFGAT and DFDemon, which are executed through different sub-commands. The DFDemon provides a service which is responsible for downloading and uploading file blocks and uh, providing proxy capabilities. DFGET and SDK request DFDemon to generate a DOM task by calling RPC interface. Finally, the manager is mainly responsible for uh, configuration management, keeping alive and controlling the subsystems. Sub and the manager is also op optional. I have just introduced the overall technical, uh, technical architecture of Dragonfly V2. Now, let's take a look at the core data model of the Dragonfly V2. As shown in the figure, each peer host represents a machine instance on which multiple file download jobs can be triggered simultaneously, and each download job Call response a peer task. Each peer task completes the whole file download by executing multiple pieces task, and the pieces task represents a file block downloading task. Finally, multiple peer tasks form a large P2P task, and the file blocks will be transmitted among peers in the P2P task. Through the previous introduction. I believe everybody has a general understanding of Dragonfly V2. Next, Jim will give everybody a more specific introduction to the client. Hello everyone. I'm Jim Ma, come from Ant Group. 
I will share in the next slides. Let's talk about the evolution of clients. The usage of DFGET is similar with DFWGET. It can download files with P2P, P2P network. There are some significant changes in DFGET v2. First change, download process. In v2, we split supernode to schedule and CDN and, and, and add a manager for multiple cluster configuration supports. The main process, Zheng Xi has talked about it. We just skip it here, here. Second change, integration protocol. In V1, DFGET cost per node with HTTP pro protocol. Now in V2, all actions are done by GRBC, building with HTTP support, HTTP2 support, security, and uh, easy integration with other pro programming language and tools. So the change embedded the DF daemon. Some words for DF daemon. The DF daemon in V1 is a process to accept HTTP proxy request and it will transfer the request to the dfget command due to the due to one request one dfget df daemon cannot process thousands of requests now in v2 dfget come with df daemon when using dfget as a proxy daemon all requests will be processed in one dfget daemon and support thousands of requests that's very great not only change protocol and the module code, but also reflects toward high performance and more future for DFGET. Let's discuss the this enhancement. First, bi-direction stream GRPC with other component. Second, upload fi uploading file with sending send file and the splice boards benefit from go long Trans transfer data from OS file to TCP connection is done by Golang standard library. It's without memory copy from kernel to user space. Third, so download the file with splice supports. Unfortunately, transfer data from TCP connection to OS file is not com coming with any benefit from Golang standard library. We have implemented TCP connection write to function for optim optimize. OS5 with splice support for Golang. With these changes, when transfer data will not be copied from kernel socket cache to user space and from user space to kernel page cache. Instead, data will just be copied from socket cache to kernel page cache. When rebuilt, DFGET with our optimized Golang we get 10% at least CPU reduce zero memory copy from kernel to user space. Look at here. Next, uh, about file, file digest. Normally, we calculate the file digest using standard library in Golang. Kernel must copy all data from user space to all data to user space, but Dragonfly data are immutable, immutable in most cases and always hit the page cache. Using AFLG with the kernel crypto API, we can avoid copying data from kernel to user space. Our code can be found in GitHub from the, here. And now, uh, this uh, here is the performance, the same real time, but with zero copy to the user space. It's very nice. For performance, TLS offloading is an option for DFGET proxy. When enable TLS offloading, the client like Docker daemon 
CIL demon container D demon are communicating with DF get demon using plan HTTP instead HTTPS. Tears terminating is done when CDN download from source or DF get demon download from source. All intersection can be found in this figure here and here. For tun tuning performance, DF get is out of box with telemetry in V2. We will support open telemetry collector, Yago tracing, Prometheus, and uh, Grafana. Here is a screenshot for tracing from Yago. These are these. These are about kind of changes. Let's take a look at uh, our ecosystem. The Dragonfly Container Image Service. We call it Nidus. It is a user space file system building on top of the container image format. The duty of Nidus is to reduce the cost of image pooling, accelerate the launch speed of containers, enable laser load container on demand, as, as well as ensure the integrated integrity of the image content. In the large scale data center like Ant Group and uh, Alibaba Group, the classic case of NetEase is thousands of containers are launched very second, and thousands of images are hosted by NetEase in the same time. Dragonfly helped NetEase to do P2P container delivery to solve network bandwidth bottleneck for image loading re and reduce reading latency and protect image registry to avoid huge traffic. This figure describes describe the process Nandos use Dragonfly to deliver image container instead of make a request directly to image registry. Nandos just proxy all requests using Dragonfly daemon, so that a significant portion of requests are cached in Dragon by Dragonfly. It helps to reduce reading requests to image registry and reduce traffic to the image registry. Dragonfly has integrated with Nidus and uh, Hubble. Exam for example, uh, Hubble, Hubble image can be prehead to Dragonfly and uh, so on. We are, we are working together for OCI v2 draft discussion. Let, let's look forward to it together. Here is the current status. Our source code is available in GitHub. And the most uh, components like, like uh, DFGAN, CDN scheduler is ready. Mm, and uh, the manager is under developing. Here is our roadmap. In May, we will, in May, we will release uh, then I will release the, our manager and the standard project improve stability and the support support ALG speed up. In June, we will release CDN Advanced Future and uh, integrate NIDUS. In July, we will support SSL and the encrypt transmission and the integrate multi-cloud storage. In August, we will release account, account authority and the dashboard tracing surprise. In September, we will release pusher, sinker, remote copy, and the file uploader. In October, we will release multi tenants and transfer transmission cross cloud. That's all. If you have any question, you can join our Ding group. Thank you.